California is home to the most polluted beach in the United States. This according to a recent environmental report. Water samples taken from Imperial Beach in San Diego County were found to be so toxic that getting in the water is considered dangerous. The beach has been closed to the public for the past two years while authorities try to address the sewage flow that is fueling this problem. Let's take a deeper dive into the ongoing environmental issues affecting California beaches and joining us to talk about this environmental justice advocate, uh, Kari Fulton. Uh, Kari, thanks so much. Um, man, that, that one caught me off guard when I was doing some research about polluted beaches and, and, and cleaning up beaches ahead of time. I mean, you can find them in every corner of the world, but what's going on down there is is criminal in, in, in many ways. So talk about the impact that this has, this kind of pollution has on local beach towns and especially down there. Uh, one thing I will say is that we have to focus in on our infrastructure and we're at a place right now where people are starting to pay attention, but we need to pay attention and, and also continue to grow on that because this is a partnership between Mexico and the United States and both countries have to do their part. But the people who are in the middle are the residents that have to live in these areas next to these beach towns that have raised their families there and also may not have the capacity to move. How are they being impacted and what health studies are being done to really make sure that they are not having residual um, public health issues from all of these toxins that need to be cleaned up. Yeah, we, uh, you know, it's it's a beach town where people can't use the beach, and a lot of beach right. towns, it's it's kind of a pseudonym for tourism. So clearly, uh, you, one would think that the town is losing a ton of money aside from all the health effects. Absolutely, and you know, across the country, we have beach towns that are just like that. Um, you can look at the Gulf Coast uh, on the southern on the eastern southeastern side when you look at the Mexican border over there and you have communities who are impacted the same because of industry when we think about the industries that have to live off of these coastlines um, so that they have enough water um, so that they can pass through different forms of energy and then also the fact that you have a waste sewer plant and a sewage plant that's right there and all of the tourists that come down to Mexico, come to Tijuana, all of these different things. And then it's just going back and impacting the community that is on that border town. And, and in many cases, I'm sure that's not a place where most people want to live at. Mm. If they could, they would move. Um, and maybe there are some areas that are more affluent, but it's really a question of, are they getting the brunt of what the communities who live closest to these industries and closest to this polluted beach are having to deal with. Yeah, and in the United States, we've all seen the commercials about Visit California and their biggest selling point, the wonderful beaches. But you, you read this and you just know that it's not alone. So as a, an impact on California as a whole, how much does this adversely affect the state? I think that, well, first of all, California is a huge state um, and it's a huge part of our American economy. So I believe that for that area that is definitely impacting. And also, I think it's also a statement because California is also one of the more progressive states in the United States. So if they're dealing with this level of infrastructure issues, what does that look like in other states that don't have, um, you know, elected officials that care about these issues? So really it is testament to how um, corroded our infrastructure truly is and why we need to make true investments across the board, even in progressive states like California. Yeah, and, and I think you're exactly right when you talk about the, the elected officials as well, because assistance from Mexico, I mean, Tijuana is well known for the cartels uh, having uh, their uh, tentacles in there as well. So that government is already stretched to the, to the brink trying to take care of crime. So when you say, hey, we need to take care of a sewage problem that is adversely affecting the United States, to what degree do you think that's really going to ring home? You know, that's a great question. That's a great question. And it really dives into the partnerships that we have with our neighboring countries and, and also the capacity that we're offering as a, as a full North America, how do we help each other to deal with the issues? Like you're saying, we're dealing with crime in Mexico and, and drug cartels and other things. And all of that comes back up to the United States, not just in, in sewage, but also in the communities 
that are deeply impacted by this drug ep ep epidemic that is caused by, you know, the passage of these different mm. um, things. And, and in many cases, it is going through the sewage as well. And there have been studies about that. So I do believe that when we have structures that build partnerships with our neighboring countries and, and really dive into that, we can build better strategies and also better collective infrastructure for one another. You know, and this area isn't alone. So what about other forms of beach pollution in other areas, other countries? Plastics, you can see behind me, they're everywhere. Uh, to what extent is that just a problem that is very significant right now? Well, you know, I think it's great that you mentioned plastics, because oftentimes when we think about plastic use, people think about the independent things they can do to reduce their plastic usage, which are very important. But the other thing that we need to talk about are petrochemical facilities and also energy facilities like liquefied natural gas that reside on these coastal regions, um, and maybe not so much on the West Coast, but definitely um, on the East Coast and in some cases on the, on the West Coast as well. And those are in beachfront areas. You also have offshore um, energy projects that live in those areas. And you also have the U.S. military, mm. which in its own self is a polluting industry that yep. doesn't have to follow the same guidelines as a private industry. Indeed. So all of those things play in. And, and we oftentimes don't talk about the fact that there are the things that we can do as individuals, like using less plastic, but there is also the things that we can do to make sure that there's better um, regulations on the industries that reside right off of our coastline.